the fact that Nigeria has not experienced any catastrophic pandemic like we recently witnessed with the, the coronavirus doesn't mean that there wouldn't be another one. And I'm speaking on the lessons learned from COVID-19 pandemic. Today, one million people globally have lost their lives to the COVID-19 pandemic. The resulting trauma on families, colleagues, and the wider community cannot be overemphasized in attaining this morbid milestone. In the Nigerian context, was the low mortality, despite predictions from global bodies, a hoax? Or were we divinely fortunate compared to the numbers from other clients? Some have opined that our genetic makeup or the tropical climate has worked positively for us. Others posited that the predominantly young population in Nigeria or the gap in our socioeconomic group have been favorable factors or perhaps low testing. As we celebrate 60 years of our independence, have we really done well in preparedness for emergencies of any kind? One must wonder, have we fared well in the handling of this pandemic? The response of the public and the private sector components of our society have been varied without apportioning responsibilities on either. Overall, the positive impact can be considered greater. It really comes down to perspective. On the issue of an enduring health emergency management system, credit should be given to the government on the response and the establishment of public health emergency operations centers around the country. However, measures will be put in place to ensure sustainability and upgrade of the centers. COVID-19 has imposed a rethink of the model conjured to tackle it while incorporating lessons learned from the earlier sister emergency, Ebola. We must incorporate long-term policies that will cater for all manners of emergency with clear standing protocols. So in the event of a sudden military attack, for instance, certain protocols must be activated to keep the population protected. Such approach would provide templates that fit several possible outcomes and would avoid the need to resort to an ad hoc committee. My advocacy today is a call to action for both government and the private sector on the need for preparedness. <laughs> preparedness. Uh, you know, not when you treat you, uh, you, doctors like this in Nigeria. No, not even <laughs> about that. Um, Sedu one once asked a question mm. when the borders were shut. He, he asked the question when, why did we shut the borders? Are we doing those things that? We've been doing before so that when we reopen the borders, we can say, yes, these are the benefits from shutting down the borders. Mm -hmm. right. The same thing today. Um, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation visited Gogolada Hospital and said he didn't know that, you know, a head facility was this bad. How could he mm. say that? He didn't know. The president had to travel to London for medical treatment while he was down. The wife recently came back from Dubai. Mm. The question is, Pre-COVID and post-COVID, are we doing the same thing? Have we learned The anything? answer is that we are doing the same thing. Yes, there sir. There is basically no difference. Yes. Because the governor of Ocean State, um, a, a staff, you know, died during COVID, and he mentioned that, ah, if the, air, air play, the airways were open, open, we would have flown him abroad, abroad, though, you know. <laughs> so, meaning that we, we weren't even preparing for anything after COVID. So we've gone back to normal where everyone yeah. who can afford to fly out will fly out and the rest of us are left to our feet. And th thank God for the COVID. I, I want to really thank God, especially for allowing the COVID to hit this country. Hmm. Uh, because now we are able to appropriate adequately what our fate would be when our politicians will not be able to leave us <laughs> to our fate to suffer the <laughs> pandemic or the, the catastrophe that uh, uh, natural disaster would have wrought in, in this country. So it is time for us to reflect on uh, what exactly we think we're doing that will help us to come out from this. Government should look at health insurance. Government should be able to provide for the people. That's the essence of government. Section 14 sub 2 of the Constitution says the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. But we have not had that. And it's a big problem. To well, us. I've had insurance because I remember trying to access um, federal government insurance, um, health insurance. The issue is it would only treat malaria and typhoid. 
you know, and the, the, common the, the, the average Nigerian has herbs to treat those. <laughs> it's when you have the big sicknesses, the kidney No, but there issues. are HMO, there are companies who are giving that solution. The government should subsidize it. Okay. Mm. For me, um, just I think a day or two ago, I watched and uh, saw that we now have um, technological devices right in front of our legislators at the chambers. So now they cannot claim that they don't know. They can as well Google things <laughs> right there and, and legislate on our behalf. It is sickening to see the sort of health care we have in Nigeria. Many times off the mic we've said we should actually have a health, an addition specifically for health, the health sector in Nigeria is in shambles. You go to the general hospitals, you ask yourself, is this a, a general hospital? Okay, so yeah. aside from where, talking about where, it. where you have sticks being, uh, uh, what's that thing called, drips? Mm -hmm. being, yeah. being Hanging on sticks. You see babies, babies being um, newborn babies. I wanted to add quickly that uh, this advocacy, while it's, you know, we're talking about coro uh, the coronavirus now. Tomorrow, it could be Cameroon. I mean, we've had situations, Ghana now uh, attacking the embassy. Tomorrow, it could be, it could be worse. Mm -hmm. How prepared are we for emergencies of any kind? Do we have like a 10-year, 5-year plan to put mm -hmm. uh, protocols in place for these unimagined situations? It's time we begin to have this conversation. Yes, our health is in shambles. What about the other sectors? Mm. What about Boko Haram is still localized in Niduguri? They are growing. You understand? We need to look at our emergency situation. In other clients, they have alarm systems that would, you know, they have safe, safe zones where you go, they stock up food, they have, you know, look at what happened now with COVID. Pharmacies have made, pharmacists and pharmacies have made a killing. Rather than, you know, help Say the public, oh. they, you know, increase the fees for all their drugs. You know, they profited all of uh, through this because we didn't have a policy. Government had had backup at that time. It would have made situations like this, you know, manageable. So we need to begin to have this conversation, not just health. Now it could be anything, but we must have uh, emergency protocol in place. Once upon a time, we had swift responses to emergency yes. emergencies, but nowadays we're on our own again. We seem to have this this ability to just wake up and be all over the place and you know be efficient and then we just go to sleep again I, I wanted to pose and then a question everything goes to, to, to the lawyers no. aside from talking about it as citizens we all know the problems how do we um impose because the the government are supposed to work for the people they're not working for their own pockets how do we make it mandatory that once you become a government or public official you must use our health facilities it, it takes um it takes willpower. We had said that once, including yes. our schools. Let takes, your children takes, go to our schools. It takes but... willpower and leading by examples. One reason a lot of people voted for President Buhari was he said all of these things. True, very mm. true, sir. And so when you come, in respect of, in spite of the position of the law, you say, I want to lead by example. No minister of mine Most should send their abroad. children abroad, abroad mm. for, for education. Oh, you now see vice presidents celebrating graduation of their children. <laughs> Did you schools. see everyone celebrating, so celebrating virtually their, during the lockdown? Today your president going abroad you know? for... You know, and if so, you ask them to, to, to enact it as a law, when you do that, who are the people who are going to enact yeah, it? It's, it's, there are it's people the who them. benefit from traveling them, them. all over the place. So, so we are trapped. It's quite in unfortunate, way. really. Um, well, like we said, it's in, in an event of emergency, if you fail to plan... It's all about humanity, and your humanity can just go under the drain. Mm. After the break, I'll visit our governance pattern. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, 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 I don't know what we can do 
if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.